uh, we are here at Women Matters in the middle of January 22. And before we go into the topic, which seems to be the healing, how do how can we heal? What can we do to heal generally and for specific things? We do the check-in as always. Who was here first? I guess Monia. So I give over to you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in Vienna. Uh, actually, Martini was first here, but doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we have very heavy winds, storm. The trees are just bending all the time, but uh, so far no damage, but it's a little scary. And on the other hand, the full moon. So this is really quite a setting when you get up in the night and you look outside, it's almost unbelievable. So it's interesting times. I'm fine and I'm looking forward to our topic and I pass on to Martini. Thank you, Monia. Thank you all that I can be with you together. I am very pleased. Um, I made a walk in this wind and I am uh, very happy that we are living close near to the woods. And uh, I, I visited an, uh, a lungen arzt how do you, uh, an, an today? What is the name? Punologist. Uh, yes. And he said that my lungs are um, very good. So I am very pleased uh, that um, I'm okay. And um, yeah, I had a very intensive time with the family, with our daughter and uh, her husband and a son of two and a half and I was just wandering and very pleased to be in his presence. Uh, for example, I was going with the um, Schlitten, Schlitten, sled, with the sled in the snow and my husband and my uh, our daughter and the husband were skiing and I was with the uh, small uh, uh, boy and he ran to another child and he said, I am Tristan. Oh, I thought it is so beautiful, you know, how people want to connect with each other. I, I I don't know you yet, but I was very pleased to um, that you called us flowers and your beautiful faces of all of you. I will do a project once I, I have already done uh, a thought about it before. Um, when Heidi made an, um, an, uh, a video of um, the Zender seeings, and I, I looked at your faces when you were working, and I will paint this as, a, as one painting with nine people uh, sitting there. Oh, I, I really, I, I'm pleased about this and I will do this. This is my, what I'm dreaming. Heidi, you said, what are you dreaming for, for the new year? And this is what I dream of. So uh, mm. thank you very much that I can be here today. Mm. I give to um, uh, Hanali. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, I'm here in Johannesburg and it just rained a little bit <clears throat> and I was really blessed the last two weeks that we had lots of rain because it wasn't so hot and it helped me also you, so the cold, cold weather and not the heat 
and I'm really blessed to be here with you. It's yeah, it's it's mind blowing when we go through trauma, how we just reappreciate everything in our lives. It's just incredible. And I was something else that really also spoke to my heart on the weekend. I was watching on Amazon Prime a um, documentary about superhuman, the invisible made visible. And it was just incredible. But literally 10 minutes before that, I was recording something. And I used exactly the same words I, as I used to start the, the video, the documentary. So I was blown away of synchronicity of, I was using a quote of, of uh, Tesla, where he said, when science begins to study non-physical phenomena, we will make more progress in a decade than we have made un altogether until this moment. And I was using this exactly the same words and how they started. So I was blown away by it. And in that moment also, I just realized while I was watching it, that when we just send love, energy to anything and everything, so much more is possible. And when we don't, but when we don't go into fear and to the old patterns, it's just incredible what happens. So I'm great to, really glad to be here with you all in the way that I'm here present today. So thank you and I'll, trans, I'll um, share to Christine, Christine King. East, right, Christine East. Right. <laughs> well, God, I'm just, I'm just still so touched and moved by the healing process that you've gone through and others have um, had something to say about that before we actually formally began. But so I, I'll save my thoughts about that because this is just a check-in first about you know, where am I at this moment? And then much, much we can explore about healing. Most importantly, is what you've already done. So you were set up to be able to heal. So um, I'm covered with snow. <laughs> um, we really hit this um, big storm that came across uh, the US. And we were pretty much, Asheville was kind of in the center of it, it looks like, although I don't watch the news too much. But I've got about a foot of snow, which is unusual. I haven't had snow like this in a long time. Um, but it, it's, um, of course, it's just such a holy thing. I feel like the image that I have is that I'm in a monastery in the Himalayas somehow, way, way high up. There's no noises, there's no distraction. There's just me and the beauty around me. And um, the only activity other than just watching snow is that I've got these great, I've got huge windows and there is this lovely little bird feeder. And I just, I, fortunately I had the presence of mind to fill up all the bird feeders max because I might not be able to get out the door. And to watch the dances, I just sat there, I must have sat there for eight hours, just watching the dances in the pecking order and how they're checking each other out before they jump back onto one of these, there are about four or five little places where they can stand and they can get the food. And it's just, it's so, I thought to myself, here I am, I've been doing this for five hours and it's still interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't think I'll ever look at birds in the same way again there's there's so much going on inside of them because my window is such that I'm literally just my body is only about four feet away from them so I can see what's going on with their feathers and their eyes so um, I'll keep on being entertained with that, I think, until, until it's possible to head out. I have a very, very long driveway and um, it doesn't look like it's gonna clear anytime soon, but the dirt road that leads down to my land, somebody's clearing it now. So maybe they'll do my driveway as well while we're talking, <laughs> a little side prayer. Hey, over here too. <laughs> so that's what's happening now. Yeah. Wonderful to be here and to um, be a part of the group. I don't take it for granted that I get to be included. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now who goes next? I guess Heidi, yeah? 
Yeah, I can do next. That's fine. We have wonderful warm weather. We have the third day in a row we had lunch outside in the sun. When there is no wind, it's really, really nice. Then from four o'clock on, it gets getting cold. And I have covered my salad in the vegetable garden because this night it should be under zero. But it's, it's wonderful, wonderful time. And my first anemones in the garden are coming up. It's already about 20 or 30, sort of. Still a few, but it's nice. I love it. Altogether, I had a bit of trouble with Doggy and Kitty. My old cat, she's almost 19. She started at a certain point to go in the always round. And oh. I, I, I think, and the vet said it too, that she had a, an, 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 a, a stroke. But she's a little better now. She doesn't go in the round. She goes also directly. But the relationship between me and her is different. She doesn't come up to me anymore. So mm -hmm. that's sort of, she's getting into her survival mode, I would say. It's not anymore so, as social as it was before. But I'm happy that she is recovering. I thought she would be dead immediately, but she's not. So maybe she makes her 19th first birthday. We will see. And this doggy was also something, but it's not so important. Yeah, altogether, I'm fine. Looking forward, what will come out this year? Many, many projects are starting, and hopefully, we will find the sponsors and everything, and also the participants. And we will see. And I give over to Christine, the other Christine <laughs> West. Christine West. No, I cannot say West because my sister is called West. Uh, her husband is called West. So. Uh, <laughs> as a name, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, good morning. Um, it's good to be here with you all. I'm kind of on a high from the weekend that I had. Um, one of my best friends had a 65th birthday, so we were celebrating her. And it was just a wonderful weekend. She lives um, in the Bay Area, just north of San Francisco. And it's wonderful to go up there. It's a different, I mean, Northern and Southern California are different places and uh, not just geographically, but just, they, they just feel different. And we always go for hikes. So there's redwood forests and it's just beautiful to be among the trees and just a different, uh, different landscape. We took one hike up a mountain and, um, when you reached the top, you could see San Francisco off in the distance and the Golden Gate Bridge was in front of us. And it was just glorious. It was just a beautiful, beautiful, um, it took two and a half hours round trip. That was, <laughs> it was pretty exhausting at the end of it. That's a long hike. But, um, and the next day we did uh, Redwoods. So it was great. And speaking of bird feeders, she had two bird feeders in her backyard and we did spend a lot of time just looking out the window and watching the birds come and go and, and the dance that they all do and up in the trees and down from the trees and the whole, the whole bit. So that was, we really enjoyed that too. That was fun. And got to meet a lot of her friends. So I hear about these friends. I've only met one or two, but got together with some of her friends and they got to meet me. So it was, it was just a lovely, uh, lovely experience. Um, yeah, so feeling really good about that. Although, you know, Monday morning, it's back to reality. And I'm already saying, what else can I look forward to? You know, what else is on the horizon? But there's nothing specific coming up other than Women's Matters to look forward to. Um, mm -hmm. But but certainly no events or, or no trips that are coming up. But that's okay. Um, Tom is doing better and better with his surgery all the time. And he's not entirely back to normal because he still gets tired and his sleep is not regulated yet, but um, he's, doing, he's doing really well. Uh, what else? I think that's about it for me. We'll talk about healing a little bit more and uh, curious to hear more about Hanalee's process. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. And I will hand off to Gertrude. 
Yeah, thank you. And sorry for being late. I'm coming from a um, work, yeah, so our, um, a workshop um, that follows the, the, we had an Wayflow meeting, that's why I'm still, um, so I'm, I'm really sorry, Hanali, that I got the message so late because I was so immersed in, in preparing that weekend and it was amazing. It was really like they were Brazilian and American. So we, we were at their time zone. So from my three o'clock to my 11 o'clock to <laughs> have two days. Um, and just the joy of being present for other people and magic <laughs> arrives. So I didn't do much. I was more in the being and, and yeah. And so um, I try to, to be on time because we have every other week. We, so it's, it's just matching cheek to cheek with, with our call for eight weeks. And I had um, uh, a call, I listened to a live event with uh, Jody Spencer, who presented the latest news and about healing and how to, how they could like research, presenting research with the electron microscope and, and everything. And so I could go in details and I was really blown away. And one of the, the big things was healing occurs in meditation. So meditation is a very big, big, big uh, supporter of healing, even causing it if you're very much immersed in it. So they could prove it and they could even prove that um, that through meditation, the, the enzymes that cut the spikes of the, the, <coughs> the virus, of the, the coronavirus, that they are inhibited so the, the viruses stay on, on top of the, the, and not go into the cells. They really showed the, with fluorescent light and everything, so, <clears throat> I could go on, but I don't, uh, but it was really amazing. So the last three days were, yeah, and a lot of preparation before. So it's very good to see you again. And sorry that I just missed in between. And I'm so happy to see you here, Hanili, Lee, in your sweet, almost healed being. If you get hard, I would be very much interested in Joe Dispenza and this event. Maybe you can give us some, some more information. Go because the cat wants to come in and then I go to the door and then it's not there. And then he calls again and then I have to go there again. Now she is, uh, he is in. So I'm sorry when I disappear sometimes. And we want to talk later about Haneli giving this the, uh, the, the case of her uh, healing and then uh, talk about healing all together. Victoria, I, see, I, I don't see you, but I see that you are somewhere. Do you want to do a check-in? Otherwise we continue or we start with a topic. I think she is still on breakfast. Oh. No, she's here. Yeah. So, okay. so, no, no, I was, I, I was out. Um, Good morning, everybody. Yeah, no, I, I went to um, to mass this morning. So I just got home the second. So please continue and I'll just listen. And um, I just wanna say, Hannah Lee, how you look beautiful. And <laughs> so just continue and I'll listen happily. So I'm sorry I'm late, but I, I just got home this very second. Okay, fine. That's fine. Hanili, so I would invite you to tell us a little bit what has happened and then what you did, uh, because it doesn't seem that anything has happened to you. It, it's only not even two weeks ago and you are like always. So uh, uh, give us the secret of what you are able to do. <clears throat> Thank you. 
first of all, it's quite, um, it makes you quite humble to share this. Um, and my whole body responds to as I'm saying that. So thank you for the kind invitation. But most of all, first, thank you for all of your support, love and care for this time. And yeah, my body is just still, um, I understand now why it happened. And there's a reason for it, which might not be obvious to most, but for me, it makes complete sense now in hindsight. <clears throat> it was quite a shock. I was um, very excited. I was busy doing something on one of our new projects and I wanted to eat something. And I was preparing a um, pumpkin in the microwave. And I wanted it just to become soft a little bit. So I cut it open a little bit like this. And I put it in the microwave just like for five minutes to get soft before I can now really get the skin off to cook it like I wanted to cook it. And, and I don't know, I was just not present, I suppose, <laughs> or really thinking about it because I've done this so many times before. So it's not the first time I did this. So it was a complete freak accident. And when I opened the microwave, it exploded on my face, on my neck and on my arm. Second degree burns. And... I ran to my one cupboard in the bedroom, which has a emergency you know, thingy in, and there was some uh, burn shield. And it's something that I would now tell people, <laughs> put it in your handbag, wherever you go, I have some burn shield because it's a savior. If I didn't have that, it would have been much worse. And I immediately called my daughter, but she lives about 25 minutes away from here. And I told her on the way, and I couldn't get all of her first because she was busy with something else. And I just told her when she then called me, I said to her, you must come and help me, but on the way, go to a pharmacy and get some more burn shield. Um, because I've got enough bandages that we can get to a hospital or a doctor or something. What's what is a burn shield? A burn shield is a product that they put on, on burns. You get, it's like a gauze with a specific, uh, and it's mostly treaty oil, but there's other things in, in it as well that you put on, on burns, whatever the nature is, especially like second, third, and fourth degree burns. And I don't know, it, I, it started, then it went into complete slow motion. And when she got it, she was trying to see where to take me because I don't have health insurance. And the hospitals wanted, just to see me, uh, in, in euros, they wanted 15,000 euros as a deposit, which is a lot of money. So she was firstly worried where she's going to get this money from because neither of us have it. And, and then um, she, there was a medical center close to where I live, literally two blocks away, and she called them. And then they said, but they don't work with burns. Uh, they, she must take me to hospital. And somehow she found this other medical center, literally also like three, four blocks from where I live. She found, but it's not something that's visible from the streets in a shopping center. And she found this medical center and she called them and they said straight away, just bring her. So it was very close. So we really saved a lot of time because if we had to go to a hospital, the closest hospital from where I live is at least half an hour's drive. So it would add on to the trauma. So it was very quick how these things, she literally was on the way to take me to a hospital to find the money. They must at least admit, you know, just look at me. And then this came up and we just went there. And... I have to say, I, I can still not believe how I was taken care of. Um, it was the in, most incredible nursing staff, the most incredible doctor. And she called in a second opinion. And at that moment, from that moment on when I was there, I completely calmed down somehow. But I didn't feel any pain anymore. And they were all blown away by this because suddenly within five minutes, I was calm. It's like a higher power took over. And in those moments, um, there was a nurse, a burn nurse sitting next to me and she was trying to calm me down and to just um, calm down the nervous system because it was in such trauma. While the doctor was now trying to find what are they going to do because of, I actually should be uh, admitted straight away into high care, according to them, because of the nature of the burns. It was incredible. If you look at me today, you won't believe it. Second degree burns there, second degree burns over my chin, neck, on my one side of my face, on my arm. On my arm, it's the worst. And from what I now remember is just the love and care that I received in that place. 
and how they were trying to help my daughter. And I was trying to send her messages that she must call like my sister and some of my dearest part with business partners and friends. And because she was still then trying to get all this money. And I just told her, I'm not going to a hospital. I was very persistent about it. And then the doctor called another doctor to get a second opinion. And he came to look as well. And when he walked in, he still laughed. He made a very interesting joke still with me. And he said, no, it's not that bad. Um, let's see tomorrow. Let's do this procedure on her. And then we see tomorrow. If she's okay, and my daughter had to stay with me, then I'm not alone that night. <clears throat> and she came to stay with me. She had to look, take care of her dog because we couldn't, she couldn't bring the dog here. That They were too worried about infection. And it was just incredible. When I made that decision, everything changed, that I'm not going to hospital. I'm not going to pay this money. I don't need it. My body doesn't need it. We can get through it. There was some self-realization in that moment which changed everything. From if I now look back, so that self-responsibility of my body knows how to heal itself in the right conditions. And the doctor still today says she's so glad I didn't go to the hospital because she said I would have not been able to care like this in those conditions because of all the other things that's going on in the hospital. You can't sleep. You know, just all the normal, although they do amazing work, it's just not the right environment for us to really heal on all levels. Not so quickly anyway. And... They, yeah, they, I was, I was, I had bandages all over. If you look at me now, you couldn't believe it. You couldn't see my face. And it was, um, and then the next morning I went in and they were so surprised. But what I immediately started doing is I started to listening to high frequency new sound music on YouTube. It was one of the first things. The second thing I knew I had to do is that I had to take in lots and lots of turmeric because of its healing powers. And it, it, fights, it fights infection because infection was the worst uh, scenario, not even scars or anything like that. But what I want to share with you was what's amazing about our souls. While I was lying there, so I could hear them speak in the distance. And my daughter told everybody, but she can speak because everybody's horrified. Your face, she's doing public work. What about her beautiful face? And, but she told them already intuitively, but my mom can speak. You know, She can write, she can speak. And while I was lying there, I had the same thoughts that, yes, I can speak. I can write. I'm okay. You know, whatever happens here, I can do whatever I need to do in this world, which was another shift because everybody else was freaking out about I'm going to have scars and deformed and all sorts of stuff. But it never even crossed my mind. And I just, I just knew my, I have my voice and I have my hands. I can write because I'm a writer. So it's all okay. And... Then my daughter came to stay with me and um, we went back the next morning and they really were surprised by the progress even in, in 24 hours. And then I had to go in every single day and she stayed for me, with me for five days. And then I said to her, no, it's okay now, I'm okay by myself now. This, because the doctor were worried that if I get uh, in fever or infection, then I need somebody to take me to hospital because that was one of the signals that I did need to go to hospital if there's infection. And the other thing that helped was the fan. To have a fan, I was sitting in front of a fan all the time. I slept with a fan as well. And it cooled the body down. So there was really no chance even for the body to get fever. And that, that helped a lot as well. Um, like in the things I ate, I immediately, I'm a vegetarian for more than 30 years. And, eating, and immediately I, had to, I realized I need to take in a lot of protein and also zinc. So my daughter got me zinc vitamins. And, but it was all intuitive. It was very intuitive things. And the high protein, my body's not used to processing so much protein, even from a vegetarian point of view, because I don't eat a lot of protein, even as a vegetarian. And suddenly there's all this incredible uh, protein. My body can't, is, is really still struggling to process that, but it helped. So it was an overdose, so to speak, of it. And so it was literally really just every day following intuition, and then in some beautiful synchronistic ways, I discovered dry frequency, I know about it, but I never did it myself, dry frequency treatment. It's high tones that, and this one is specific for burns. And I started listening to that three times a day. And I continued with sound healing as well. So it was, a, it, and then crystals as well. The, the crystal that I knew immediately, I have to, I, I held them in my hands constantly, whether I was sleeping or awake, 
was um, it's a clear quartz and an amethyst that I held in my hands. Um, and, and that, even while I was there for them cleaning the wounds and re-roofing the skin and do all sorts of very interesting things with the skin, I was just holding these. And there was so much calm. But, but the doctor said what really got to her is that I didn't have any pain. She never in 17 years had any patient that had such burns that didn't have pain afterwards. And I didn't have any pain at all. So my, my nervous system, I think I prepared it beforehand because I'm swimming in cold water every day now before that. And I was literally, we were doing an 18 kilometer hike up a mountain two days before it happened, which was the, my body was used to, um, to, to exertion. So because I'm doing these hikes on mountains and swimming every day, like breaststroke. So even with my arm, when they work on my arm, they also surprised that, that it doesn't hurt so much. But my arm muscles is very strong because I swim breaststroke most of the time. All these things I feel have prepared my nervous system to also handle it much better. So I think, Christine, you said something I, I was in the right space. And I think I was. If it happened to me a year ago, most probably I wouldn't have handled it like that or two years ago. So it was really a sign what happens if we prepare. You know, if like there was burn shield in my in my my place, uh, my do the right things. So the preparation part was was um, to have these things available was really a blessing. And then to, but also these angels that were waiting for me in the hospital. It's unbelievable. The doctor still today. She said she wants the recipe because she wants to share it with her other patients because this way of healing doesn't happen in two weeks. If they've never seen it before, and. So I do believe it's the inner journey as well as an outer journey. So when you spoke about meditation, Gertrude, I can completely resonate with that, that when our spiritual practices are so important to prepare us for these type of things and to continue them while we heal, because that's why I also feel that in a hospital, I wouldn't have healed so quickly because of those conditions are not there to do that, those type of things, necessarily all of the things I did, you know? like in the hospital room where you with other people all the time, people in and out. So I'm really blessed and grateful for the conditions and, and that my, and my attitude, I think it contributed, the doctor also said she couldn't believe I was just happy or every time I walked in there, I was like, look at me, look at me. And it was like, Whoa, what's going on? Look at her. She just went through this traumatic thing and she's on top of the world. So I do feel that we, set it out there for ourselves, whatever happens to us, it's just a confirmation again for me that the healing process is in, it's holistic. So it's, I'm not, the medical world helped so much. I'm so grateful for that, but that by itself wouldn't have gotten to this. So it is up to us and to listen to our bodies and to our cell memory and to our intuition, to what it tells us to do because it knows, it, it, it guided me. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have looked like this today. I was thinking I was going to sit here with bandages because that's what they told me. I'll be in all these dressings for at least a month. And it was taken off already last week on my face. So it is a miracle, but I, for me, a miracle is just a change in perception of what we expect. And if our heart is in anything, as I'm sharing this with you, anything is possible, no matter what it is, that we have this ability to self-heal, and it's a holistic thing. It, it, all these things work together. And I'm really blessed for it all, for all the love and support and care that I received in the last two weeks. Thank you. I'm complete. Thank you, Haneli. Don't tell the medical doctors of the normal kind that we can self-heal. And the, the pharmaceutical industry, they don't want to hear that. <laughs> but I have to tell you, this doctor, she's beautiful. But... I could see her change over the last two weeks. I could see her in the beginning. She was still like, in, in the first few days, she was still shocked by the progress. And now more and more, she's curious, what am I doing? Because I also, I'm doing something that works. And now she wants to share it with her patients. So that already for me is an incredible thing to happen. That in that circumstances, they are open to it when they see it. So seeing is believing for them. And then they can't deny it that something else is happening here because their case study says different. So I think there is something happening slowly. And I think for both of us, for her and for me, there was a blessing in it. 
that, and we are deeply connected. She's such a beautiful soul. I was so grateful that she came, that she was there because there was other doctors present as well. And she was the one who got to me and worked with me. So, and the nursing staff too, all of them. It's, it's a blessing to see them go beyond what they are used to, that there are other possibilities. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Anneli, uh, what I'm interested in, apart from the whole story, is you are so good or so advanced in spiritual uh, practice and so on. Would you think that these sorts of occasions happen to us <clears throat> as a sort of trial, as to see if we are... <clears throat> If we are really there with our practices, if we are walking our talk or something like this, or how, how do you see this? It's very interesting. I've, I've had many traumas in my life before. So this is not the first one, like real bad ones, like a pressure cooker exploded on my tummy. And that was third degree burns. And I don't have any scars. It was incredible, it was also a freak accident. So I've had many such incidences in my life. And if I look back at those times, at that time I, I wasn't following any spiritual practices, for example, when this pressure cooker thing happened. But what, what I just want to tell you what happened so synchronistically after this. On the weekend, I received a message and it said, you survived a trial by fire. Your whole body is transforming and mutating. And the, the, the tissue will dissolve, the scar tissue will dissolve. I was just in awe because it was like, I didn't perceive it as a trial at the time. I don't know why, but I did know if I didn't have this something bigger than me that I'm connecting to, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to handle it like this, to go through it like this. I do not see it as a trial as such, but I do see it as a purpose and I understand now why. I can completely understand now why, that if we, because we're busy with a project where we share, especially with organizations and leaders, preparing them to respond to whatever happens. And now this is a case study. I would never have thought of myself as a case study for such a thing. And here I've, I'm living proof of it. And from, a, from humility, not from bragging about, but to show whatever, we, whatever is happening in the world, when we're ready to respond it from a space of love and not fear, so much more is possible. So I think it was shown to me that if, we, if I did go into fear, I might not have healed in this way. And that I did have the presence to, you know, the, in those, especially when it happened, the complete shock in your body to just know everything is gonna be okay. And that there is, the, there is life that's running through me. I'm still breathing. I can still speak. I can still write. I can still move. And it, it, was, it was those things that sort of calmed me down. And, and it was also incredible to be present to other people's responses to it. To also see what, that, what is possible when we just go into a space of love and not fear. But I have to tell you, I love the new steam. Uh, Martini, you spoke about is like baby, literally like, especially on my cheeks and my forehead. It's literally like baby skin. Um, it, it's it's pinkish and it's light and it's you know it's after the sunburn. You also get the you know the skin goes off and then the new skin comes forward. So it literally feels to me like a personal rebirth. This is so amazing. I'm I'm just blown away by by how you reacted right away <laughs> in the right way and and could follow your intuition. I mean, when you're in shock, normally <laughs> uh, it's not doesn't yeah fear takes over things like that. So, and, and, and thank you for sharing, because I think that's like for any trauma or for any thing that might happen to us, it's, it's kind of being prepared in the being, sure on the physical as well, but also 
in the way to, to be able to react in another way. And um, I was, when you shared, I was just thinking about the Friday um, life event. And um, what, he, what he said what, was, it's the intention and it's the elevated emotion. So we don't go with fear, but we choose to be with joy and happiness and the joy to be alive, to say, I can speak, I can whatever. Um, so to make that choice to not go down the rabbit hole with the emotions and this meditative state, state so be in flow. And that all together, that this is the, the these are the ingredients. Uh, and, and you perfectly said, <laughs> that was what you did with a little, yeah, some sound, healing sound and, and other extra stuff that, that was supportive, but you, you, you're living proof for what he said on Friday. And it was in the electron uh, microscope. It was in the, so they showed a lot of figures and how they found it out and things like that. So, so it's really a professor at the um, LA um, University uh, with his team who, who working together with him. They were very skeptical at, the beginning like your doctor and then they said what <laughs> how is that possible and and so they they skipped along and and are really really happy about that so and and they want to publish a paper about it because they they apply for um funding uh in this covid um uh, related work so so they want to publish a paper and maybe I get the, the copy of it. So I will send it to you. We have lost Haneli. She might in South Africa, sometimes the, here she is, the uh, electric current is unstable, but she will be back in a second. Yeah. Go ahead and talk. Whoever wants to. Uh, has anybody else have experiences with uh, turmeric capsules, or how do you take it? I take it every day in the in the kefir in the morning, about half a uh, coffee spoon, more or less. Uh -huh. Can you just uh, write to me the name of, of the product or turmeric? <laughs> You can buy it. Yes, but uh, curcuma or what? Curcuma, yeah. Curcuma, yeah. Take capsules every day, uh, two capsules. I forget what the milligrams are per capsule, but you have to make sure it has black pepper with it because there's something about the black pepper that enables the turmeric to activate. Mm -hmm. So the products will say that it, ha it includes black pepper. Okay. Is the no, name Monia, I, I use it with, I use, I use the powder. Yeah. So I use the powder in everything I eat and I also make tea with it and ginger and uh, cayenne pepper also. Cayenne pepper together with turmeric mm -hmm. is uh, also, it also keeps from infection from happening, but it also builds up the nervous system and the immune system. So even for COVID, um, the, the turmeric tea is incredible to prevent that. Turmeric, uh, uh, garlic, uh, ginger, uh, so you can add cinnamon too and cayenne pepper. I just add those to everything I eat. Um, and to and, I, and sometimes during the day, I would have some tea as well. With tea, make a tea. Powder, uh, Heidi said she also takes the powder. It comes in, in, in bottles or how? Uh, it's in a, we get it in a little box. Uh-huh, box, okay. Yeah, you can you can um, order it. And, um, I oh, yeah, I can just fetch one. My husband ordered it in in bio quality in in the, on the internet. So yeah. in a 
yeah. kilo. <laughs> but <laughs> one so kilo. I, have one I kilo. think it is yeah. important what Hanali was saying that she t just takes powder. I do this as well, and it is much cheaper as the caps capsule. They are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, get it in the powder form, then and you also can do pepper in your tea. And then you have the combination, you know, you have to be creative with your teas. And, um, and it is cheaper. Then you can add it uh, as much as you want. And yeah. it's a very good flavor for Asian food. I mean, yeah. like... Asian, Asian dishes, so we use it a lot for cooking as well. Yeah. I don't know if and you can put it to yogurt as well. With yogurt, also, you can just add um, all yogurt. those, you know, like cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, and cayenne pepper to, to yogurt as well. And I add a teaspoon of, because I'm not eating any meat or fish, mm -hmm. so I eat, add a, a teaspoon of um, peanut butter, so it's also high in protein. Then and it gives another, then takes all that because you can easily get bored with the flavor of turmeric, because especially if you eat it in all your dishes. So you can start playing around. You can really get creative. My daughter is brilliant with that. She, she makes the most incredible vegetable dishes with, with that. And um, sometimes you can't even see it, but you know, it's in there. I have a question. Is the major um, outcome of turmeric anti inflammatory? Or is it anti-inflammatory and immune system combined? Mm -hmm. Those two factors are the main. Both, both, both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. So yeah. what what do you think about uh, MMS or CDL? I started. I had this um, a bladder infection, and I started to use MMS. Uh, which is a, a combination of natrium chloric, I think, and uh, acid something. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it helped immediately. Only it was heavy on the stomach and also turmeric. If you eat too much, it's heavy on the stomach. I mean, the, the uh, acidity. But do you know about these uh, healing methods? Uh, uh, CDL, I don't exactly what it means, but it is practically what they do in the swimming pools for for to to disinfect the water. And when you drink it, it's it it, it, it tastes like having taken a, a a sip in the swimming pool. And this uh, somebody had found it out when in a in an emergency uh, situation when he had nothing else, he was highly feverish and everything, and then he had these things, and he said. The body is almost all done of water. Why don't mm -hmm. I drink this? And it, it was immediately healing. Uh, and so it seemed to be very good as anti-inflammatory and also antiviral and anti-everything, but it doesn't cost anything. So, uh, I mean, very little. So it's not very promoted, no? and this, this sort of cure. I will figure out how, what it is called exactly and then uh, I can tell you, but it's it, the, the person, I, the family who is here now with me, she is a nurse and she is into these things, you know, and she gave it to me. And in, in three or four days, more or less, I talked with Christine King about that. And then she said, oh, it takes a long time, but it was gone. So it's, it was sort of a miracle too. <laughs> but in, without, you know, necessarily... I think both things, as we are in integral, we have the right-hand quadrant and the left-hand quadrant. The, the, the mindset and the meditation and everything is important on the left-hand quadrant, but also on the right-hand quadrant, we can do something like sort of medicines, you know? And when we mix them together, maybe it's, it's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I would wanna just raise a question with, I. I went through a period of time when I knew that cinnamon was good for me. And I, my personality is such as something's good for me. Oh, I'm just going to take some more of it. I think each one of us has our own range of how much of anything that um, our intuition needs to tell us. 
So um, I would just add that from my own experience that I have to just sort of check in. Do I need a teaspoon of this or a teaspoon and a half or a tablespoon? Because my body tends to be over sensitive to whatever I put in it. But again, that can shift too. You know, as you were saying before, Heidi, I'm, on the other side of the brain with the way I'm thinking and feeling could change that high sensitivity to be less so. I know it from homeopathy that when you have an acute thing, <laughs> that uh, it's not that important that you hit exactly the right uh symptoms it's just like so so you don't over do it mostly when you have a real big thing going on like uh, you you hit your head and take annika or something like that but when it's more subtle when it's more um like chronical or so it it's very important to have the right dosage so so in a very acute situation as hers, uh, then it could be like more could be good. Uh, so just when you slow down in the process or come come down from the, the acuteness, then then I think it's it's uh, what you said, Christine. That's very important to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, to kind of train ourselves to always ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can check. Yeah, yeah. Or use these little things. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Uh, like to check how how much is it good now, or yeah, yeah. yeah. For, yeah. In 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 what order? How many hours in between, or things like that? There's a lot of wisdom, isn't there, in this wisdom room? Hanelie's out again. Um, what struck me in Hanelie's uh, explanation of what she's done in her journey is the the balance that she is able to um, keep between, you know, the immediate is the physical healing, obviously addressing the burns themselves, but then she quickly switches over into more of an emotional healing, the optimism and spiritual healing. So um, she ends up having a balance of all of those things. She doesn't necessarily, well, I guess she did prioritize obviously the physical first, but um, in the long run, she's not excluding any of them and she's figuring out a way to make them all, uh, all present in her healing process. And Heidi, I'm kind of curious what, about your question, whether, Hanali felt this was kind of a trial, you know, to, to see if she's walking the talk. I'm kind of curious where that question came from. It, that it, came from, I can tell you immediately, I did a lot of spiritual work and uh, for a while. And then in 2004, I had a cancer and I had to have surgery. And I thought to myself, now we will see if you have learned something if you are fall into fear and everything or if you how do you get through that that was for me a sort of a trial and so i wanted to know if she saw it as this too you know and i found myself uh, i also prepared also with music and everything but for the surgery itself i came with my my um, music player but they didn't allow me to take to keep it and so as long as i had to wait i heard all these refrigerators around me and so i used them uh, i changed i reframed them as music and i used that to calm me down before getting you know the injection for for passing out and i saw it then very um, deliberately or very consciously as 
okay, let's see if I have learned something, you know? <laughs> so. Well, it's interesting because as you're describing it, it sounds more like you saw it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to use what you had learned, not necessarily a trial. Because when I think of a trial, I think of it's a very Judeo-Christian concept, you know, where we're presented with these things to test faith, right? That's what we've learned a lot in, in that uh, perspective. But it sounds like you while you use the word trial, you actually said this is an opportunity for me to look at this and apply everything I've learned. This is something I can use. You know, you are you are addressing this in a positive way. As I am an Enya type four, I am seeing the glass half empty and not half full. So I I address it in a more negative way. So independent of Christian or whatever. Uh, uh, I think it's just the, the character which is making myself see things in that way, automatically without really thinking about it, you know. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, mention that in Christianity, um, there is a sentence like, I guide my girlfriend into the wüste, uh, in the, what is the wüste? Desert, desert. Yeah. I uh, guide my girlfriend into the desert. And um, I have experienced this very deeply. And I think this was a challenge for me and is a challenge, whatever, uh, whenever it happens. And I also want to mention what he has gone through. You all know the, the texts of he you know, uh, that uh, uh, um, our love is, um, wird auf die Probe gestellt. Also unsere Liebe, we, uh, how far we can go. And if we love really what you said, Heidi, if uh, that you, uh, um, uh, we grow from it. Uh, like what, what um, uh, Hannelie was telling, um, the doctor grew from it, her daughter grew, grew from it. But her daughter said, mom, you can write and you can talk. So um, they help each other. And I think this is an, a challenge. It is whatever happens in the presence, uh, it can be a challenge for us, but it also can be the, the opposites. And I see the challenges. Um, uh, I am also a four, Heidi. <laughs> I do not know uh, as much, Christine, as you know um, about, um, uh, but, but I guess uh, you are a little younger and I have, um, uh, I came into con contact with the Enneagram uh, when in the, in the nine, the beginning of the name, the end of the 80s. And um, we never talked in a group who we are, uh, what number we are. And, and I, I think if I judge uh, uh, seeing uh, you are seven, you are eight, you are nine, and, and you are four, one, two, uh, seven, things like that, then I'm putting the things in the a soup ladder, and then I judge, In and this box. is not, not <laughs> yes, and this is not helping me because then I block myself. Yeah, so I, yeah, um, I, I, I think it. Uh, I'm very um, pleased with the healing process. What she was telling, but I think we all have the experience of how we came out. Uh, uh, certain circumstances and uh, that we are amazed that we uh, handled it correctly. Yeah. 
I need to leave, sorry, <laughs> coming late and going early. Uh, so I would like to, to say goodbye and say my last words here today. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it to, to reconnect and to hear about Hanadi's wonderful healing. She's really like, it's it's so amazing and and i wish her when she comes back i wish her the best and uh speedy re full recovery and i thought this conversation was really enlightening as well so thank you very much again so i will always be just short in time we couldn't find another one time with 13 people so so i had to go along with that okay bye bye thank you bye bye i've lost um Hanley again not sure if she will come back victoria we haven't heard anything from you yet and also christine not very much so victoria would you like to say something at least you didn't even have a time to check in <laughs> oh you can check out now with a longer time <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have much to check in or out. Um, this is just kind of a transition time right now. Um, yeah, there's so much happening and things are so uncertain that it's, I'm just kind of, um, going from hour to hour. <laughs> um, that's true in, in all aspects of my life, actually, in terms of um, my plans, my professional plans. I have a lecture series coming up and I, I have to decide if it's going to be online or in person. Um, well, I know I want to do it online, but I have to convince the presenters um, of that fact. And um, yeah, and I'm staying very close to the ground, listening to Beatrice's various um, various issues and questions and decisions. Um, she may be moving. Um, so I'm just sort of that, yeah, that's my vicarious life. Um, I know I get into trouble with ammonia mostly, isn't it? <laughs> About <laughs> always answering. Also, Heidi. Um, I wanted to say Martini, um, Beatrice, when she was visiting here over the holidays um, during Christmas, um, we finally um, did her whole travel log of her trip to Europe. And um, on she had a way of putting it on the big screen. So it wasn't just like seeing tiny photos on her phone. And um, it was just wonderful. We spent the whole evening and the pictures um, of her visit, all of it was really wonderful to watch. But the um, your house and the 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 pond and it was just like the Garden of Eden. It looked like like Beatrice had actually gone to paradise. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, of course, so Heidi has the Paradiso Integrale, but I haven't seen um, very many pictures, so I I don't know exactly. I imagine what it looks like, but um, anyway, it was just a thrill to see your beautiful environment martini and um how it was but it was just fun to see see uh see her beatrice's whole trip and she finally showed the um showed me the the video of um of the dance that she did for her aunt's funeral in Linz, and um i'm still just totally you know move it, it was so beautiful and so profound and um just so I, I just, I, I really rejoice that she's, that she's expressing her creative gift, her artistic gift. It was just such a beautiful thing. Um, I think she showed it to you, Martini, when she was staying with you. Yeah, it was really, it was so beautiful. So I'm really happy about that. And um, yeah, otherwise it's just, uh, yeah, kind of day-to-day -day things. Today I'm putting Christmas away very sadly, reluctantly, but um conrad my late husband always said we could wait till maria lichtmesse um 
to take everything down, but it's so hard to do here in America because nobody does that. So it feels, I feel like it's already sort of, I don't know, it seems, it seems like the season is over. Um, so, cause here in America, of course, already everyone's already celebrating Valentine's day and the day after Valentine's day, it'll be Easter and <laughs> they just race through the holidays. So I've lingered as long as I can, but um, today's Martin Luther King day. Well, it's being celebrated today. So um, that was nice. I heard a beautiful homily at mass this morning about um, about the the Martin Luther King and his the, his legacy and his mission and what our responsibility is going forward to to try to continue to um, create a, a more just and loving world. So that was beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just sort of general things and but I'm sorry I was late today I was I was trying to get zoom on my phone but I'm not technically advanced enough yet for that Did so, you get uh, some some curve back to the topic healing oh I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> while you were talking about checking in and out I <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sorry um healing yeah well no I mean I was as Gertrude said the, the Hanali's story was so inspiring so amazing but um unfortunately um, I'm, yeah, I'm not the person to contribute in that respect because I, as I was listening to all these, um, vegetarian and, and the turmeric and all these things, uh, a little devil inside of me said, oh no, I'd much rather have a big juicy steak and a martini. So, <laughs> so I'm not, I somehow there's like, I had a, a moment of like profound wickedness, <laughs> um, but actually, having said that, the most profound moment I think of my whole life um, was when I had viral encephalitis in, I was in Kathmandu and I was in the hospital. Um, took a long time for the doctors to diagnose that they had to do a spinal tap finally. And um, once it was diagnosed, they said, uh oh, we lost. Monia. Oh, Monia. Now I lost my train of thought. Oh, once they diagnosed it, the doctor said to me, um, oh, now that we know what it is, there's no cure and there's nothing we can do. So he said, in the next 24 hours, you'll live or die. And he just left. And it was a Friday afternoon. So he just um, you know, went off for his weekend break. <laughs> and I was lying in this um, ward with like a dozen Nepali people all in the same room, no running water, no plumbing, um, a, a very gruesome situation. But I, there was a huge window and I could look out the window and see the rows and rows and rows of rice paddies, these green, because um, it was just, just before monsoon season. And um, I suddenly, as I was lying there, I remembered Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And it's just, I mean, it's a beautiful Psalm. And I felt this extraordinary sense of joy and peace. And I just, I just rested in that moment of, of, um, and Martini mentioned Job before this, this, this sense of, of just letting go and not trying to be the agent of anything, just, just, just submitting to whatever was going to come and whatever was going to happen and this great sense of release. And I've never experienced it to that degree again, of course, because it was a life and death moment. Um, and there was no assurance that I was going to live the next, you know, that I would be alive the next day. And it was so amazing. I've never forgotten that moment because I, I didn't expect it. I thought, you know, I, we all have that impulse to survive and to so apropos of healing um and i actually hearing hanali's story i i feel like by by kind of letting go and not panicking and not having fear and kind of just 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 reaching deep within to her, where her intuitions were, were giving the sort of the guidance was a kind of um i mean it's maybe sounds counterintuitive, but a kind of submission. 
So even though she was proactive and she was doing all kinds of things and she was quick, like Gertrude said, and instead of, um, you know, just panicking and going into shock, she was, she was like really thinking clearly and, and moving quickly, which I think is what, what saved the day. Um, at the same time, I think it's that, that clarity comes from, um, oh, there's, there she's back. Um, <laughs> From my experience, the clarity and this it comes from a kind of um, almost paradoxical, like letting go, mm -hmm. just just letting go into the moment and not fighting. And I think the fear love thing I put it I put that's my favorite verse in the Bible. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. That's from First John. Um, I always go back to that verse when I feel fear because I know that. Um, you know, fear is the, is the killer <laughs> and love is what brings, you know, and even going back to Martin Luther King today that, you know, that, that that's, it was love that, that, you know, sustained him. And even though he was assassinated, he lives on and it's through the, the message of love and that he didn't have fear. He, I think he absolutely knew he'd be assassinated, but it didn't, he, he couldn't be afraid of it because he, he had bigger things to do. And um, so that's my message. <laughs> Is that good enough, Heidi? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so let's give over to Christine, to Christine King first, and then to the other, to the over, west, and then from east to west, and then to, back to, to <laughs> Austria, and then to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is checking out, yes? That's what we do. Um, I'm still learning the norms a bit. <laughs> Um, I think I'm, I'm just deeply humbled by the interface of when something just happens like that, whatever it might be. And where that goes really is so at one with everything I've been doing prior to that. the way I've been living my life prior to that moment. And I'm just humbled by that, which really makes the treasure of this day and this breath something that I don't know that I've appreciated in such a visceral way as I am right now. It's like, I, I feel like every breath, every step, every choice ultimately prepares me for that pumpkin exploding. So there's a visual there, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and that doesn't mean that all of a sudden I'm gonna feel the weight of that responsibility. Part of it is holding the lightness to let more light in and let more love in and um, less fear. Um, so yeah, there's, um, there's much that I get to carry forward from this time together. Thank you. And I did have one question. I think, Hanali, you mentioned it, a film that you saw. I didn't write the name of it. Could you, could you mention that again, please? Because I think I want to grab hold of that. It was honest. It's superhuman. Superhuman. The Invisible Made Visible, and it's on Amazon Prime. The Invisible Made Visible. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will check out. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up today and being present. Um, Hanali, I wish you continued healing and strength uh, on your journey. I have... Uh, a lot of faith that you will continue to do a superb job of healing and doing whatever it is you need to do. Um, and Victoria, thank you for bringing in the, the sense of fear versus love with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. He's, uh, I will keep him in mind throughout the day because it's very, it's a very powerful message. So thank you for that. And I am done. Martini, check out. Uh, 
I'm grateful for all of you, uh, what we were talking and things will come back to me. They react on this um, several times. I did not write it down, but several times I wanted spontaneously uh, say something, but certainly I didn't. And, and I forgot now uh, to mention it. I forget to mention because I don't uh, know it now, but I think it is, oh yes, I know what it is. Um, Hanali, you said you were out of yourself and whatever it is, it is not our private self. And this is the moment, and you said it like this, that it's like this, that is eternity. It is the moment of, of uh, it is nothing that doesn't, this joy, what we have in, in the deepest darkness is this eternity that it is there. And we can experience it, and we uh, uh, in in uh, uh, Kina we say, don't ask uh, wise men, ask the men, the people who have experiences. You know, and and the more we experience, the more we joy. We are joy. We are full. Filled with joy, and and this is the presence that um, if we say no to the presence, then we we cannot joy. We cannot have the joy, and if we say yes to the presence, whatever it brings us, then we can joy, and this is eternity, and it is so beautiful, and I'm so pleased that I can share this with you. You know, it is. Uh, with whom can I talk about this? I don't know. Uh, so thank you very much uh, that it is possible. Thank you. Heidi, uh, it's beautiful. I still have to mention one thing that um, because of the Zen of seeing, another woman from Salisbury uh, came into contact with me and she will uh, visualize, I paint, but she will uh, present it for me because I'm not good in presenting. So we are working together and this is your work, Heidi. So I am very, very pleased that uh, things are happening. Things are happening. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And I think, Haneli, you see what is written, joy generation. It's for a long time that she is working in joy, you know, and so it's not by chance that things are coming out. So I think, I personally think much of our lives is sort of destiny or our soul journey or something, but we have the choice. And I think um, Haneli is doing it much better than for instance me, any type four, uh, <laughs> in, in preparing and in, in, in doing the work which is needed. And I, as long as I know you, you were always such a joyful and radiant presence, you know? And so I'm not really astonished that you can handle these things, you know? And when you told me that you have to, to come to, 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 to Europe, you needed to have all these horrible shots, you know, and you said you can handle it. Now, after what you are telling me, I do believe that you can. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. And it's just, it's amazing. And I'm so grateful that you are here and we can talk together. Thank you. And see you in two weeks. Oh no, Henley, you have to check out stuff. And I'll just quickly do a check out. Sorry, I couldn't, I lost my connection. I battled to come back but I'm glad I continue to try. Just thank you for your presence and for, for hearing my story and to receive it. And I'm really humbled, Heidi. Um, we are all connected. We are all interbeings. We are, yeah, the connection part is the most important part. And 
Martini, thank you for what you just shared. An idea just, it just came up. I just want to share that quickly. It, it, when you shared, Martini, about the Zen of Seeing, I was just thinking the idea of the February 4D mapping. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Martini draws that, whatever comes out of that? Mm. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that too. And just thank you for listening and also for your support because you are like my <clears throat> safety net. Uh, you are part of my being and my presence and my consciousness. So thank you for that. And also for all the love and beauty and grace in this, in this group. And Christine King, you're most welcome. And Thank you. And I, there was one other thing I wanted to say to you in my checkout, and that is that um, I'm just going to hold you in my heart over the next two weeks and excited to hear <laughs> how well you're doing when we get together in two weeks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ladies, and have a nice day and a nice evening in our part of the world. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>